Hi there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com here with this week's episode of the Market Monday. Hope this actually gets uploaded and on the YouTube before Monday, but hey, better late than never. This is a topic that I'm going to be exploring possibly throughout the week. I want to do a live stream, a Q&A type style for the speculation for the good old Masters 25 that's coming out. And we'll, we'll actually see spoilers next week. So I think we need to get ahead of these. And I think that... In anticipation for a reprint set like this, you have to try to figure out what is going to be reprinted to A, stop kind of the bleeding, so stop the loss of value, which will happen if you have some of these cards, and B, inevitably the cards that do not get printed in these master sets, this is the last master set, at least for a while, we think. There is a lot of reprints coming up, um, or not reprints, a lot of products coming up, but we don't know how many reprints are going to be included in those type of products. So with Masters 25, they might go out with a big bang, and there is a lot of value that can be destroyed here. Um, all the cards that you're going to see in front of you are have a $50 or above price tag that are eligible. Uh, I did not include some portal sets or some of the other more obscure sets. Uh, most of these actually do come from modern. I was actually taking a look at the difference between legacy and modern, and they've done a good job reprinting all of the cards that are playable in Legacy or even popular in Commander from older sets that are on that pesky reserve list. However, Modern still has a lot of cards that are eligible for reprints, have already been reprinted, but still hit that $50 price tag. So what I'm saying is if you go back into Legacy, there aren't many cards over $50 that are not reserve list cards. So keep that in mind when speculating on cards in the future or on trying to manage your collection. That Legacy and Commander, for a lot of these cards, just do not have enough of a, a demand to really increase the price value of these cards above the $50 mark. And if they are do see a lot of play in Commander, they tend to get reprinted in the supplemental uh, pr Commander products or other. They've just gone crazy in the last few years with Legacy specific. So anything that, uh, that was printed before the Mirrodin block has already had the reprint if it was eligible uh, not on the reserve list type thing. So anyway, there are some goodies on this list though. So as you can see, the first one is at the $50, barely making the cut, is the Dark Confidant. Now this just barely did spike back above the $50. It has had kind of a flat uh, trajectory here for, for since it, let's see here, so about a year. It's been about a year it's been sitting about on this $50 mark. Uh, the low is around $35 for the Dark Confidant. It hasn't been printed since Modern Masters 2015. I do think that this one has a high chance of being printed in the set, other than there already is another card with a lot of value in Ravnica. We're going to get to that card later on. Uh, that is eligible for reprint as well that I think needs to be reprinted more than the Dark Confidant. But I could definitely see them. This is a very, very iconic magic uh, uh, for, for the Magic 25. This has a lot of history. It was one of the best cards uh, in, in, when it was an extended in Legacy. Didn't see a lot of standard play during its time period, but definitely did dominate the Legacy scene for quite some time and has been in the modern format since the very beginning. In fact, it was is one of the, 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 the staples, the whole reason to be running like Jund, and a lot of decks would actually even splash black just to put in the Dark Confidant. So I don't think that Dark Confidant is safe by any means. I would say if we're on a scale of 1 to 10 or, a, or an A, B, C, D, type thing of or I think this has about a neutral rating so I won't, it was one of 10 or ABCD it has about a neutral I think that the, it's a demand or, or the eligibility for this to be reprinted or the likelihood this is going to be reprinted is pretty 50 50 in my opinion all right so the next up there's another card that just recently breached the $50 mark or actually it's been there yes yeah, so I guess it's been there for since our devastation is scape shift now scape shift is used quite heavily in the modern format it we've already seen some Jace shift decks, so it's Scape Shift that is splashing the for Jace. Some of them have run blue in the past anyway, uh, but you have cards like Anger of Gods that can help protect Jace. Uh, you have the Ramp already with a, a number of different cards to get that turn three Jace, and of course turn three is a lot more powerful than turn four for Jace, and then you can begin to lock out your opponent or draw cards uh, to where you need to be. One of the things for Scapeshift, you, you do need to dig through your deck. So we should see a little bit of revitalization for Scapeshift. And I think that the likelihood of this one being reprinted is very high. It hasn't seen a reprint. In fact, this is one of the very few cards in Modern that is seen playing Modern 
that has not seen a reprint in one of the master sets, uh, even iconic or, or eternal masters. And so I think that this one is going to be a shoe in for masters 25. I don't expect it to lose that much value. Morning tide has a lot of supply out there, but not uh, comparison to scars and Mirrodin forward has still vastly uh, less supply out there. So even a reprint in this set at a rare, uh, could half the value, but I think this one will st still stay at around the 20 to $30 uh, mark. Scapeshift, I think if they reprint Scapeshift, we probably will see lands that actually uh, work with it. So I'm trying to identify some themes that we're going to see in Masters 25. I really think the Mono Black Devotion is going to be Black's theme. And I think that Slivers are going to be in here. I think there's a lot of Slivers they can reprint besides Sliver Queen. They could put, you know, one at Rare, one at uh, Mythic, probably possibly even two at Rare one at Mythic, and then they can uh, throw in a bunch of different slivers from various sets uh, to get kind of the one card from each set type type feel to it. So uh, this red-green, though, I think could easily be a ramp-based uh, strategy. So I think that I think that what we're going to see, like a two-color, a five-color, that we'll have the five-color theme. We might have like a little bit of an artifact theme uh, because we, we have the, the, the Imperium, but I think that I think the artifacts are actually going to be more of a ramp-type deck rather than like uh, a heavy on the artifacts. That's why I think it's the, the Platinum Imperium rather than uh, the other cards that are people are speculating like the Blightsteel uh, Colossus. I think it affects too tough to make it work to have... Uh, it, people are saying that that is the one card that you could throw in there because it doesn't really need other infect cards to support it because it's a one-shot type card. But usually when they print sets, they like to have the key mechanics on more than one card. I think it's like three minimum and they like to have like five. So... I'm thinking that the, that one is going to be the 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 Imperium, the uh, and it does need to reprint as well. It's one of the more expensive cards in modern that has not seen a reprint. So I think again, Scapeshift. I think the red green is going to get some sort of ramp based strategy. Uh, we have a lot from like the Zendikar blocks that have a landfall type strategy that works very well. Scapeshift and of course Valakut could be shoot in for that type of strategy. So I think that if you have Scapeshift, you better be safe than sorry than to hold on to Scapeshifts because I, I do think that the, the, the reprint for this is 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 coming. On to another green card that we could easily see a reprint is Doubling Season. I like this for white green. I know they've done like a white green populate type strategy a ton of times in master sets, but I don't see them really going away from it again because a lot of the cards that I feel are going to be reprinted in uh, the masters would definitely fit in this more token type strategy. You could actually, maybe they don't even need it because there will be, we have Jace, so maybe there'll be more planeswalkers than normal. So doubling season can just have some synergy there and they don't go that type of strategy. But of course, throughout the history of magic, white green has typically been a lot of token based cards. Even if they go into green, like heavy base tokens, uh, doubling season is going to be the best way to enable that. They could also go with plus one, one counters and justify putting the doubling season in. So if you're sitting on any doubling seasons, I also think this this one is a really eligible reprint. It's the third uh, least expensive card on this list at $57.63. All right, so the next one, this one's kind of iffy. It has been reprinted in Modern Masters 2015. This is Noble Hierarch. It does help with like sort of the, the five color strategy if there is one. However, again, I think it's going to be Slivers because like, Slivers just spans the 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 history of magic you have it all the way up to m15 or does it yeah it doesn't go to core right just m15 and m14 had slivers in it so that that will be the focal point i believe of those two sets they'll get some sliver pieces and then you have all the ones of course going back in the urzas and as well as the stronghold right that's the last time with slivers uh anyway it was originally they were a huge part of the storyline so noble heart could be justified in that case but exalted again is a weird mechanic to throw in i thought that maybe if we went into like the noble hierarch then we could go into the the angel the what's the, the m13 angel that has exalted and then that also worked kind of with the token based strategy this could also be kind of the ramp but i think that they're not going to go with noble hierarch for this slot the more iconic card is birds of paradise so i don't think they'd want both birds and noble hierarch so i think your noble hierarchs are pretty safe and the thing about Noble Hierarch is I always thought this card was just going to go crazy when it wasn't spoiled in Modern Masters uh, 3. However, it flatlined off and actually went down, but it does see quite a bit of play in the Five Color Humans and the Counters Company. We've actually seen it in Bant Eldrazi before, in Bant Nightfall, Bant Spirits. A lot of decks do like to run the good old Noble Hierarch because it is 
the best mana, mana dork type card because of the added ability for Exalted. If Infect ever does come back, then Noble Hierarch, of course, will skyrocket for that reason as well. So I, I think it is safe, and I think it, it it's it's going to go up throughout the next year because I, I have a hard time seeing both Birds of Paradise and Noble Hierarch in this, and I, I do think Birds is going to get the nod. All right, on to the next one. It's going to be the Celestial Colonnade. I also think this one is safe because the... If they're going to print this, they'd have to print the entire uh, string of these. And I just don't see that happening. Um, I think that, that the amount of lands, we're going to have a lot more utility type lands. They do want fixing, I'm sure. And there's been speculation for fetch lands. We'll talk about the fetch lands uh, coming up. But they can't. They at least can't have both fe the fetch lands and man lands. So Celestial Colin, it also is, that it's a rare. And then they've already, you know, this is a set that they've already had a card. Uh, isn't this one what Jace is in is in World Wake as well? Uh, now I can't think of it at the moment. Jace is in World Wake. Yeah, Jace is in World Wake. So I, I don't think they have room for the Celestial Colonnade. And again, they'd have to really, really hit it hard with the Creeping Tar Pits and things like that. So I think it's safe. It's going to continue to go up. It's actually one of the better cards now with Jace uh, unbanned in Modern, as it is just a shoe in for basically any Jace deck. Most of the Jace decks are going to be running blue-white. Uh, there are a few that are in other colors, but it tends to be the, the consensus is that's the best way to build around Jace. There's a lot of Gideon slash Jace decks, the new Gideon of Amonkhet. Ancestral Colonnade is the win condition besides Jace's ult in that deck. So heavy, heavy control, a few Snapcasters, a few Celestial Colonnades. And I think this card is safe. It's going to continue to to go up in this price, price range. And event, eventually, I, I just can't, I think that they're, they're going to have to throw this I don't know if they can throw this in other standard set. I'm pretty sure they can, though, because they had the Manlands in the last Zendikar, but story-wise, story it's kind of tough to throw it in unless we revisit the Zendikar again. And storyline-wise, though, we might be needing to revisit uh, Zendikar uh, as, you know, it's kind of the central point for a lot of things going on. Uh, the Eldra even though the Eldrazi have been taken care of, uh, Nickel Bulls has been there before, and we don't know what, what that plane has in store. It's a very mana-rich plane. And, and so story-wise, I, I can see us going back to Zendikar. And I think that's where it would be reprinted. But I, I have a hard time seeing this in, in the Masters 25. All right, so here's the another one that I do believe, speaking of lands, and is going to get a reprint, even though it was just reprinted in Modern Masters 2017. If we have any sort of tribal feel, especially slivers, I do think that Cavern of Souls is going to be in here. Now, it's... I, this will be the mythic land spot, in my opinion. It has the most value uh, for a mythic land by far. Well, there's one other they could easily put in here, which I don't think is going to be put in here, but it might. Uh, we'll get to that uh, coming up shortly. But Caverns of Souls, if I'm correct with Slivers, this is perfect with Slivers. I think that a lot of the decks are going to have uh, a little bit of sub-themes of, of tribal matters or maybe even class matters because we do have the entire lore one. Uh, block say for example that they go with blue if they go with like wizards and then splash in some other colors possibly caverns of souls could get the nod here however it has been double reprints do happen often but a lot of times they like to to wait uh to let the dust settle but tarmogoyf had three in a row we had dark confident get two in a row we had uh, plenty of other uh, of these cards get printed uh, twice in a row in these masters based sets so caverns of souls i think is not in the clear I think this could easily, it definitely does need to reprint again, the $61, and it just doubled back in value. So it halved in value after it was reprinted, and then quickly gained ground again. I think this is the one that recovered the best out of everything out of the set, out of the Masters uh, 2017. So it's it's now sitting at the fourth most expensive uh, card, and I guess these ones also recovered quite well. Uh, but when it's the original Caverns of Souls, uh, let's check, take a look at it and see where it went with, it was all the way up to before the reprinting from the, yep, it was all, all the way up to 62 bucks. So it's already recap, recouped all of its value from its height and is, is fastly approaching the most expensive it's ever been. So it absolutely does need reprint. In fact, when I was, I was doing this list, I was quite surprised at just the health of magic. We are all worried about potential equity for cards for sets and i don't think that even if wizards were, were to keep up with the rate that they are reprinting cards or these master sets they actually can't keep up with the demand of the market which is a good sign at the start of the year i thought the magic was just going to get kicked in the balls i really did i thought that that with the community divided with the amount of reprints out there i thought that we were hit, heading towards a bubble 
Um, there are some scary things, just e economic indicators for uh, the global economy that could hurt Magic. But uh, regardless of that, the, the hobby seems to be very strong. And there seems to be a lot of people still spending money in modern format, especially Commander. And, and it's, sh it's shown with a lot of these, these cards that have both modern playability and um, Commander playability be reprinted and then and recoup their value within a year which is phenomenal for this. It's a good sign. So I think that this one is, if Caverns of Souls does not get a reprint, yeah, this card is just going to shoot through the roof. We could have like uh, a card that's the most expensive card in modern after all the reprints are said and done. Um, let's go on to the next one. The next one is Mana Drain. I don't think that Mana Drain will be reprinted because it was just reprinted and already lost half its value. It doesn't make sense for this deck, I think, or for this set. I think we will see Counterspell because there, again, is not a very more iconic card than Counterspell uh, for Magic the Gathering. And Mana Drain, of course, is is hitting that slot. We already have a lot of Mythics we need to hit, and we can just put this in a common rather than a Mythic. So I don't think Mana Drain is going to be in here. It is still losing ground daily. It's losing, you know, a few cents a day. Not a lot of people... Uh, it's, it, this is very narrow, the kind of decks that can go in because it is banned in Legacy, and is, is so it's Vintage and Commander that you can you can play mana drain so of course the uh the price of this card is reflecting that and continues to go down uh it might not even be the most expensive card in iconic masters when the dust settles because we do have horizon canopy nipping at its feet even though it's just a rare uh there isn't like a mythic that i think can overtake it but this could horizon canopy sees a ton of play and we could see this card uh, leapfrog it if this continues to go down say 50 i could see horizon Can canopy going back up to 50 so anyway, I don't think it's eligible though. The other card I just don't think that it's going to see a reprint here is Crucible of Worlds. It's just in a really weird spot. We could have some sort of dredge type strategy. Dredge has been a a really, really popular um, mechanic throughout the history of Magic. It's, it's dominated Legacy at times. It's been kind of a staple there. Even Vintage has been there for quite some time. Um, and then we all, we saw it even hit Modern. Uh, Crucible doesn't go in a lot of those decks. Recently in Modern, the only time Crucible sees a lot of play is in some of the Tron sideboards. Let's see if it's still doing that. Uh, it looks like there's a white deck that is running. Well, Drawsy Tron sideboards, uh, just in case their lands get destroyed, they play it back. And there's a Crucible that is plays a one-of in this Martyr proc deck. So not a lot of ma Modern. This is definitely its Commander. The commander players just eat this card up as it is a great way to get back lands that have been destroyed, or there's a lot of utility lands that have sacrifice-based abilities that you can then get them back. There's a lot of locks, a lot of like stack stacks that, that like this type of card in modern uh, to lock out your opponent. So Crucible Worlds, though, I don't think it's going to get the reprint here. People have been calling for it for a long time, but I do think that we could see this in like a Commander's Arsenal type product. What do we have coming out? We have reprints of Command... We have Commander, not an Arsenal thing, but we have just the anthologies commander anthologies too uh so yeah this could be another card that just misses the reprint or we could see it in the uh, there is the the two-headed giant type format Top, possibly a card like this can be thrown in there the same can be said about doubling season though uh so we could be wrong about doubling season that could be kind of the chase cards to sell that set is crucible and doubling season however i just don't think that there's going to be enough room to to be able to put all the artifacts they need and the valley, they want this at a mythic, and I don't think that they're going to be able to throw another artifact mythic uh, in this slot. I think the the platinum imperium is going to be uh, the other myth, the mythic for artifact, and so this one just doesn't have room to be thrown in uh, the set. Uh, speaking of the other mythic that absolutely could be in, but I don't think it's going to be in, is Mox Opal. I don't think that Metalcraft is going to be a a even though op like moxes and like chrome mox slash mox opal uh type cards could definitely be in this set i i just don't see metalcraft getting another it just it just crowds so much design space there's so many cards that you have to put in that to make this actually even slightly work i think they've learned from modern masters 2015 when they what was it when they put daybreak cornet and one other aura in the entire set <laughs> so it's like impossible to even chant your stupid uh, dude because they didn't put any auras even in white to help with the daybreak coronet and so i think that they've learned from that and i don't th i don't think that mox opal is going to be 
in Masters 25. I think they'll leave this for some equity in the future. I think it's also on the watch list for being banned, so they don't want to, you know, have that kind of conundrum uh, with, you know, having to, to ban Mox Opal later down the road. However, you know, we haven't seen a lot of the decks that run. We did see Lantern Control uh, win the Pro Tour. And, but Affinity is on the downturn, especially with a lot of the decks that we could, we could actually see Affinity, um, come back. It does really suffer from Bloodbraid, Colgan's Command, but a lot of times they can race a Bloodbraid if that's the route the Jun decks are going to go. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know with Mox Opal, I, I just, I personally don't think there's room for a lot of these mythic in the artifact slot, especially a zero drop one. All right, so then we have the Scalding Tarn sitting at $70. Scalding Tarn is an interesting one because it is definitely does need a reprint. The other cards that are sitting around $35, 30 what, what's the other the other um, fetch lands at at the moment? I think that they are, yeah, 47 for Verdant Catacombs and then Misty Rainforest. So they, they've all been uh, dumbed down to a reasonable um, price point. They are going up like crazy. The other, the cons land still are, are, have flatlined out, haven't been going up too much. I think they, they're going to save these for another rainy day for another uh, set that they need to, to pump into. We have Jace, which is a huge draw. I also think we're going to see another iconic planeswalker in here or, or powerful planeswalker. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, there, there could definitely even be two of them in this set to really push the sales of, of this. Uh, Masters 25. So I don't think that we have room for Scalding Tarn. I think that they're going to use the land slots, uh, not in the like the rare and the mythic slots as much, with the exception of like Caverns of Souls. Uh, so Scalding Tarn, I think they're just going to wait on. It's just going to continue to to increase in price. Man, if you can snag up some Masters 25 or Masters 2017, Modern Masters 2017, that might be a good deal. I mean, the set value of is is probably pretty high right now, or the estimated value that you get out of a box. Um, of this set. So on to another card that's been printed a lot. I could actually see Tarmogoyf being printed in this set. I don't think that Tarmogoyf is safe. It has been printed in three masters and modern master sets. Um, it has started to increase in value, but there isn't very many cards in magic that really represent magic the way that Tarmogoyf has it dominated, extended, at the time period. I believe it actually did pretty well at the end of Standard. I, I didn't play during that time period, so the history is kind of uh, blurry with Tarmogoyf, but it's been a huge staple in Modern since the, the format and Legacy. It was, it's been a huge staple there for quite some time, and so the Goyf is definitely one of those cards that I can see them throwing in. However, this would be a lot of Mythics from that time period, from traditionally what's been put in master Modern Master sets, in this mythic slot. I personally don't think that they're going to do four in a row uh, for these type of hype sets. They don't need it. I don't think that Tarmogoyf is going to uh, be in this one. Now onto a card that I do believe is going to be in this one, which is Force of Will sitting at $72.60. I think that the blue spells type thing, especially with Jace, uh, I think Force of Will will be another the other mythic for blue. A lot of times you get like uh, two per color. Uh, let's just check it some other some other master sets here and see exactly uh, how many. So we had Liliana for the black, and we also let's just go to Mythics. How many do they usually get? So Mythics we have uh, Mythics in the set. We have 15 Mythics in a master set, and we have black and I believe yep Gristlebrand and Liliana for example. Uh, sometimes they get more. Do they have more than one red or more than two red in this one? Nope. Looks like it looks like they did two per color, and so I, I do believe that Force of Will is going to be the other one because again, it's it's something that is very very uh, iconic to Magic, has a huge history surrounding the set, and it goes in what I think is going to be Blue's theme, which is going to be a lot of spells and a lot of control. So we're going to see Counter Spell, Force of Will, Jace the Mind Sculptor and a lot of the, the other archetypes to that. So I think that they're going back to the Modern Masters 1 type theme, that there will be, you're going to be able to build decks from the past. And so the Phyrexian Obliterator was a huge sign. I think that that's the route they're going to go with Black is going to be the Cobble Coffers, the Urborb Tomb, Tomb of Yagmoth. There's two more cards that need to be uh, printed somewhere in the set as possibly rares uh, for lands. And then 
so there that that that's for black. I think green with the doubling season with the tokens or counters are gonna go that route. So blue is gonna be the spells, all the the really good control spells throughout the history of magic. They're gonna they're gonna at least jam a few in. So my my pick is force of will and Jace being the two blue mythics. So I think that this isn't safe, that this might be the straw that breaks the camel's back. And we the good thing about Force of Will, though, is it does, out of all the legacy cards, it's using like 50 plus, 60% of all legacy decks, I believe. And so the, at least the supply, this card needs to be reprinted over and over just to keep the, the demand from legacy from, re, from making this hit back up to 100, 110, $120 mark. And legacy already needs some breaks. They have the reserve list to have to deal with. And so I think Force of Will... Uh, is going to be reprinted in this set again, and then it won't need to be reprinted for quite a while. Uh, so there's my call for there. The other Planeswalker I do believe that is going to be in this set is going to be Karn Liberated. Uh, Karn Li Liberated does need another reprinting. It has not It has seen a reprinting in Modern Masters 2015, but with the amount of Tron decks that were out there, and uh, I think that this has been on the radar since Masters 20, uh, Modern Masters 2017 wasn't included in there, so it could be reprinted in this one. And it's again, it's another card that has a lot of story within the the 25 years of Magic. It's been you know been around. They could they could go for another. I think Karn will be somewhere in this set, and I think this is going to be the one they choose as it does need that that modern reprint. It's it goes in the ramp based strategy. So if you go into the colorless ramp based strategy, which I do think is going to be a huge part. See if Scapeshift gets reprinted, then Karn could be you know a payoff for 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 Scapeshift going to get. Uh, well, maybe that's actually pretty pretty bad at that point because Scapeshift doesn't really ramp up; it just replaces lands. But um, if there is any other sort of ramp that gets into Scapeshift and Valakit, uh Karn can be in this kind of strategy as well. So. I could easily see another Karn being reprinted, but this is the one that, that I think is is the going to drive the pack sales and is going to be uh, one of the hype cards for it. And it, it traditionally is two Planeswalkers per set. It's usually one is a bad Planeswalker, one is a good Planeswalker, or one's a mediocre, one's a really good one. We could easily get two really good ones, or we could get three, which is where, where I'm expecting uh, to see with this 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 particular set. All right, so on to another blue card that I don't believe it just had a reprinting. I don't think the Snapcaster Mage is going to be in this set. It's currently sitting at around 72 bucks from the Modern Masters 2017. And although I, I have said that I believe that some cards from Modern Masters 2017 will be thrown in this set, I don't believe there will be a lot of them. So it's it, maybe one. I think there was like one card from Modern Masters 2015 that was reprinted in Modern Masters 2017. That was Tarmogoyf. It was the only, the single card that did not uh, or did see a reprint. Everything else was kind of fresh. And I think we're going to see that sort of mentality when comparing Modern Masters 2017 with Masters 25. And so Snapcaster, I think, is ineligible for that reason. <sighs> Goyf, I still think, is, is pretty 50-50. And we'll be talking about another one, which I do think is a high chance of getting a reprint. All right, so let's go on to another one, which I I don't think Chalice... Chalice, this one's a weird one. It hasn't seen a reprint in quite some time. It's one of those cards that I think is on the short list for, the, or at least the watch list for, Ma for Modern. Uh, it's one of the most hated cards to play against. Uh, this is Chalice of the Void. It is currently sitting around about a $78 price tag, and it is hasn't seen a reprint since Modern Masters. So it could easily go in, it definitely could see a slot in here. The Especially, this is what makes like Metalcraft really, really iffy. There's a lot of these type of cards, They if they, if they want to print cards like the Chalice, then it's going to really crowd the slot that we need for other rares in the, the Metalcraft. Um, I just don't think Chalice, I think they're going to wait for Chalice for some sort of equity down the road for another set for, uh, this could... This could be your your battle bonds type card to drive sales. Could be the Chalice of the Void, uh, as it's very annoying in a multiplayer uh, deck. Maybe they don't want something with a lot that's that's a headache though, because I think that's going to be a casual type set. I don't think that this has enough of a an interest throughout the history of Magic to see a reprint. Could definitely be wrong about this because it definitely is on the radar. It's been at this price tag for quite some time. Uh, so here was the uh, well. Yeah, here was the Masters. It was already after about spoiler season where it what it was deemed it wasn't in there. It was around forty five dollars, so it's it's gone up about thirty bucks 
uh, since that time period. So I guess it's been on on Wizards radar, but personally, I don't think the Chalice is is going to be reprinted just because there's just not enough design space for these particular cards in this set. All right, and then on to a huge jump from Chalice we have to Rashadden Port. Rashadden Port is 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 very awkward for a reprint. It would have to be a mythic. This could be the mythic land that they decide to reprint in this set. So if we check back over to like the, the modern masters, they, they went with the mythic land they went for. This was caverns of souls. And I think, again, I think this is going to be the one that, that breaks the rule and gets reprinted from a set, but if not, it could easily be the Rashadden port and it does need a reprint. It has it's one of the very few, uh, non-reserve list cards that has over a $50 price tag. And this is a whopping $95 price tag. Uh, Legacy, it is in a fair amount of decks. Um, it's also played in Vintage, and it's it's a good way. I think they, they play it in decks that like to lock out, so Wasteland lock, lock decks in, in uh, Legacy, as in you can start tapping down your opponent's lands during their untap phase, and then they can't cast a lot of stuff, or during their upkeep is when you do it. And it's just miserable uh, to play against these the, the Rashad and Port uh, once you kind of get the the lock going, so I think that this to me this seems like this is the perfect card to throw in the battle bonds as the multiplayer type format. You can choose which opponent to tap down the land. Again, it, it, it all depends on how complex they want to make that set. If Rashad and Port is going to be saved for that set, so I don't think if it gets reprinted in this set, it will be in June or when does that even come out? I can't June or July is when it comes out, I believe, or it was further down the road. Anyway, it was announced not not too long ago as the 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 two headed giant, but this does seem like a a fairly good two headed giant card that could sell packs and and get the the hype buzzed for that particular set. They usually they typically add berserk and conspiracy, uh, two, uh, conspiracy one had some pretty decent cards too to sell those packs, and I think they're going to need something like the Rashad and Port to to uh, get people to take their focus on everything else that's going on in modern and actually buy that you know the supplemental sets like conspiracy and well i think conspiracy one was a dismal sales conspiracy two was okay but then it kind of burned out it didn't really hit where they want it to be and actually it was pretty good sale at the first and then it really burned out and then unstable was very very popular mainly because of the lands and so i don't think that they can do that again it's it's gonna be very tough for them to to print you know foil tokens and lands that, that hold all the value of a set as so they're going to need something for battle bonds and so i don't think it's going to be in this set masters 25 it's going to be that one all right on to a card that i do believe is going to be reprinted again which needs a reprint because it's, it's it's pushing that hundred dollar uh threshold which is liliana of the veil very iconic card has a huge storyline as much as jace it's probably between Jace and Liliana, the duo of Magic the Gather Gathering. Of course, the representation, they're going to need a woman planeswalker. I don't think they're going to go with Chandra because Chandra doesn't really have a lot of cards that are that. Um, and maybe they do need a mythic from our time period. They could actually sell packs. So maybe Chandra, um, Torture Defiance is a good good likely card to be reprinted from Kaladesh block. But I think there's some better things that they can choose from. Well... That is her storyline, is is Kaladesh, but I think that this is going to be the other Planeswalker that is going to be spoiled last minute. Maybe it will be on the pack art this time. Liliana the Veil. Uh, now we'll have $200 plus Planeswalkers in this, this huge money grab set. It also works with Mono Black Devotion. It also works with, I think, the other theme of black which will be kind of sacrifice type cards i think grave pact is going to be in this in this set i think it's going to have a somewhat of a recursion based strategy i think gray merchant of asphodel will be here i think that cobble coffers and urborg to uh the just the the good old black mono black control and this is a, a huge piece throughout the history of modern and in a lot of even jund and eight rack decks and, and any deck that basically can play liliana has played Liliana as it's just a very, very powerful card. So that's, I think they, they, they will break trend instead of two planeswalkers have three Karn Liliana Jace. That's where the value of this set's going to be. The other mythics, I think is, is a lot of these, these 50 plus ones. I think for that reason, 
just don't have a lot of room. So if I can recap the, the we'll just go down the list one more time. Dark Confident, I'm going to say is not going to reprint. Scape Shift, I do think it's going to reprint as a rare. Doubling Season, I do think it's going to be reprinted as a rare. Noble Hark is not going to be reprinted. Celestial Colonel, not going to reprint it. Caverns of Souls, I'm going to go ahead and say yes, because I really think this is going to be the sliver. I think the other sliver land is going to be uh, printed as well. And there could be, we could see like even Uncharted Territories be another land at the uncommon slot. And this will really smooth out these type of tribe tribal decks. Like you could, in theory, draft enough of these. City of Brass, I also think will be uh, a card that's going to be reprinted. So to hit that five color slivers type mark. And I, I, I'm going to say yes on Caverns of Souls. Um, the This is Mana Drain. I do not believe Mana Drain is going to be. Crucible Worlds. I do not think Crucible Worlds will be in here. Nor Mox Opal. Nor the Fetchlands. Um, nor the Tarmogoyf. Uh, I do think Force of Will. I do think Karn Liberated. No on Snapcaster. No on Chalice. No on Rashad and Port. So there's your value. That's a lot of $50 plus Mythics. They're going to be spoiled. There's a lot of rares at the forty and the thirty dollar mark that are are are, are eligible for this. Uh, that I think we will 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 see a bunch of them. But I think that that's going to be the draw for this set is these mythics with high price tags. And then they can kind of look at other cards that are just kind of fun that that, that build around those type of. We're going to definitely see some downshifting of cards. If people another video of I'm, I'm going to make for Popper of cards that I want to see downshifted. Uh, by far, I want to see some of the Prowl cards downshifted for Tribal Rogues in Popper. Uh, there's a specific card. There's one of them I was looking at, a, a Rogue card. I'll have to think of it again. They would have been perfect for... I, I think that there are some Popper decks that are just so close to being able to uh, be played. So I hope we see some downshifts there. And inevitably, we'll, I think we're going to see a lot of rares downshifted on commons uh, just so that they can be thrown in these sets and represent their blocks. Um, I could even see something like hardened scales get downshifted to an uncommon as it's between that and doubling season. If it goes like a token or a plus one counters, it's, it's something that uh, needs to be uh, drafted quite heavily. Um, so, so we'll be looking at that in the future too. For any of your predictions, definitely in the comment section below, be sure to how about the ones I've um, see who can do the best on 50 plus cards. If I missed a card too, let me know in the comment section. I took quite a while to look at all the cards like again i didn't put like imperial seal on here or some of these other cards in portal three kingdoms especially that aren't on the reserve list because eh, they could easily be put in this list but eh, i wasn't going to take the time to try to to mull over those ideas let me know in the comment section for each one of these cards and i i don't know maybe we'll 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 do something for the person that that predicts the best predictions for the Masters 25, which one of these 50 plus cards are going to be included. This has been Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com. Thanks for watching.